Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. It's Fragrance Friday. So if you missed my little programming note at the beginning of the week, I'm planning to upload all of my fragrance content on Wednesdays and Fridays going forward. That way it gives me a bit more consistency with my schedule and you know what to expect from me. So today I'm going to be sharing a list of some of my favorite fresh, crisp, and clean fragrances. These are energizing, a bit juicy, kind of clean out of the shower. Perfect for the warmer weather months, so spring, summer. They're great everyday fragrances. Office appropriate, gym appropriate, never inappropriate really. And they're also great for anybody who's maybe a bit more sensitive to fragrance. If you tend to get a headache or you just don't like to wear anything too heavy for extended periods of time, these are your fragrances that are great grab and go every single day. Spritz with abandon, get out the door. Now, if you've been with me for a while, you've heard me say numerous times that I don't typically lean towards citrusy fragrances. I don't like anything that's lemony fresh, kind of reminds me of cleaning supplies, and it's just not the way I want to smell. I don't necessarily hate that entire category of fragrances. I'll appreciate it on a blotter card, but it's not something that I want to spray and I want to wear regularly. But there's always an exception to the rule, and I have four citrus-forward fragrances here to talk about. This first fragrance, the Kaoli Citrus 08, I think this was the first perfume that really made me start to doubt myself and question whether or not I truly dislike citrus-forward fragrances, because it is so beautiful and feminine and bright. And I guess part of the problem is that I usually associate really citrus forward or heavy citrus fragrances with an eau de cologne or something that's maybe a bit masculine, too fresh and clean. But the Kiali Citrus 08 is completely different. It opens with a sparkling burst of citrus notes, including Italian bergamot and pink grapefruit, which mingle with the rhubarb, black currant, and pink pepper an immaculate floral cord of rose santifolia and Bulgarian rose, and then it ends with a lingering veil of musk, tonka, and oak moss. What I really love about it and what surprised me the most the first time I smelled this fragrance is that it's very zesty and energizing without being too green or too harsh and bitter. It's very fruity floral adjacent. Of course, grapefruit is technically a fruit, but in fragrance, citrus and fruity are separated. I also pick up a lot of the rose. It's floral and feminine at the same time while still being very fresh. Heaven. This is fruit salad heaven. It's kind of the perfect summery citrus. It's a little bit sweet. It's just light and kind of airy. Mmm. The pink grapefruit is such a nice touch. And you do get kind of a sparkling champagne crispy pop right away, but then it softens. I did mention these aren't going to be the longest lasting fragrances. If you wanted to layer this fragrance, of course you could. It has the musk in the base, so this would layer really nicely with the Kaoli musk if you really like musk. You could certainly layer this or combine it with something else if you wanted to give it a little oomph, make it a bit more powerful. But I think on its own, it's the perfect grab and go. Pink, grapefruit, and rose are the two main notes that stand out to me. If you like the sound of that combination, I think you will really like this fragrance. Coming from somebody who always thought they hated citrus forward fragrances, the Kaoli Citrus 08 is incredible. Delicious, floral, feminine, juicy, just the perfect citrus perfume. I love it. I'm gonna stick with my citrus picks first for the sake of organization. I separated my list into three categories. They're all very fresh, but first we have citrus, and then fresh floral fragrances, and then more aquatic watery fragrances at the end. So this next one is still a relatively new addition to my personal collection. It's Paris Riviera from Chanel. This is a very zesty citrus fragrance. Keynotes include Sicilian orange, pedigrain, jasmine, neroli, sandalwood, and musk. It's part of the Lazo collection, which are all eau de toilettes inspired by watery destinations that Gabrielle Chanel loved. Oh, wow. This is very fresh and clean. On its own, I think this is leans a little bit more feminine, but smelling Riviera right after smelling the Citrus 08 
The Citrus 08 from Kayali is a lot softer, much more feminine. You have the rose, the sweetness of the pink grapefruit. This is a lot more like an orange burst, like biting into a fresh, juicy orange, and you get that zesty burst. It's a very clean citrus without smelling too soapy. Almost reminds me of a really expensive, luxurious fabric softener. I could see this as a linen mist, a hair mist. And it's just very happy. It is a very joyful fragrance. Perfect for just spritzing all over, you know, whatever you're wearing, whatever you're taking with you, and then get out the door. You don't have to think too much about it. It's a little bit more casual, but still elevated. I never really pick up on the sandalwood in the base. I'm sure it's there, but it's very light. And I think it works in the fragrance's favor in this case. I usually really like sandalwood. Well, depending on the fragrance, love-hate relationship at the moment. But it doesn't dry down too woody, which I think is best. This next fragrance, just like the Kayali Citrus 08, was a very unexpected love. This is from Floral Street. It's Sunflower Pop. And it's a collaboration with the Vincent Van Gogh Museum. So as you can see, it has one of the famous paintings from Van Gogh on the back, the sunflowers. And on the front, it has the little artist signature. It says Vincent. Last year when they were in Miami, we did the Van Gogh experience, which was pretty cool. You got to learn all about the artist and then see some of his most famous works. Highly recommend checking it out if it comes to your city. They did a great job with the bottle, this bright yellow, the vibrant colors and the sunflowers on the back. I think it perfectly captures the essence of the fragrance. It's very bright and sunny and happy and it definitely has a pop. Keynotes include bergamot, bellini accord, honey accord, crisp amber plum blossom, orris, and fresh mandarin. Floral Street is one of the clean at Sephora fragrance brands. Mmm. Oof. It has this tingle to it. Like it's a little bit tart. Like a sweet lemony citrus candy. Like lemonade. That's probably the best description. It kind of has that lemonade, so it's a little bit sweet and tart and sour all at once. But it's the combination, it's the balance. It's perfectly blended so that it's not too harsh. This is a citrusy perfume for citrus lovers. It is unapologetically citrus. So if you typically love that, that type of fragrance or you love those notes, then Sunflower Pop was made for you. It's like sunshine in a bottle. And what did it for me and what made me decide to ultimately keep this fragrance and really learn to love it is the dry down. The dry down smells so pretty. It's just a little floral, a little citrus, a little fruity. But it's a great perfume. I think Floral Street is one of the most underrated fragrance houses available at Sephora. And then my very last citrus forward freshie is Versace Dylan Turquoise, the Eau de Toilette. This launched, I believe, over the summer in 2020. It's like summertime in a bottle. I think this is the perfect gym fragrance. It, this is very citrusy, fresh, clean out of the shower, but not too masculine. Doesn't smell like an Eau de Cologne. Keynotes include lemon, Italian mandarin, guava, transparent jasmine petals, and freesia. I probably could have included this with the aquatic fragrances on the list, but that lemon is just so apparent when you first spray the fragrance that to me, this is just almost a citrus bomb. But because it has the jasmine and the freesia, it is a little bit softer and floral, but it's very juicy, very aquatic, very watery fragrance. And I think you can kind of tell from the bottle, this frosted turquoise blue just reminds me of being by the ocean or being by the beach. And that's how it smells. It reminds me of a beach vacation when you're done laying out for the day, so you come back to the room to quickly change, freshen up so you can go out and explore. This would be the perfect fragrance. It's casual, but it still smells elevated. This is white tee and jeans, cutoffs, flip-flops. You're not dressed up. You're not going anywhere special. You just want to wear something light. Perfection. We're moving on now from citrus to fresh floral fragrances, starting with the new number one de Chanel Lo Rouge. This is the revitalizing fragrant body mist. 
this is so different for Chanel for a variety of reasons, not just because this is a cleaner product. It's made with up to 97% naturally derived ingredients. It's infused with red camellia extract and camellia water to refresh and invigorate the senses. Skin feels hydrated and looks radiant. It opens with an energetic burst of citrus and red berries. The scent unfurls into a heart of jasmine and rose, the iconic signature of the house's fragrance, along with comforting iris and musk notes. They call it a fragrant body mist, and it does contain some skincare ingredients, so it's not really an eau de toilette. It's kind of a multi-purpose, it's a very versatile body mist, body, face, hair, skin. You can kind of spray it anywhere. I would not recommend spraying this directly on your face, but it does talk about the camellia and how it leaves your skin refreshed. So I think this is kind of that perfect step out of the shower, towel dry, spritz all over your body, maybe you apply the fresh body cream, and then you can layer a fragrance on top. It's not really going to replace your fragrance for the day, although I do think, depending on what you're looking for, you could kind of spritz this all over, use it as a hair mist, body mist, and then run your errands, or do whatever it is. Well, even if you're just like staying at home and you're not going anywhere, so maybe maybe you don't want to wear your Baccarat Rouge 540 when it's just you around the house. I think you're worth it. You certainly could wear your most expensive fragrances to work from home, but if you didn't want to, if you just wanted to smell really nice, you wanted something to kind of lift your mood, I think it's important to understand the distinction so that you're not disappointed. I don't want anyone to think this is going to be similar to their Lazo fragrances because it's really not. Hmm, this does smell really good. To me, this smells like Le Beige, or it sort of smells like the foundations or the fragrance that they use in their makeup and their skincare. Is it going to be a fan favorite, especially for Chanel fragrance lovers? I don't think so, because it is so different from what they typically offer. I think it serves a place in a fragrance collection, but it's not going to be front and center. If you're looking for a fresh floral from Chanel that will give you more impact that you can wear as your everyday fragrance, it has projection and strength, then Chance Eau Tendre is an incredible option. The Eau de Toilette came out first, instantly became a favorite, but this is the Eau de Parfum. So it's a little bit bolder, more intense. It's still a light fragrance, but I think the Eau de Parfum just gives me that oomph that I need. It's a fruity floral. Keynotes include grapefruit, quince, rose accord, jasmine, and white musk. Chance of Tendre is a very youthful fragrance. Delicious. I think this would be a great introduction to Chanel fragrances. So if somebody was shopping around for maybe their first Chanel fragrance, I would probably point them in the direction of Chance of Tendre, depending on their preferences and what else they told me, what other information I had to go off of. But if I were just going to kind of throw it out there as a very general first Chanel fragrance recommendation, Chanso Tendre. Because it works in so many different scenarios, I think it's incredibly versatile. It's beautiful. It's a crowd pleaser. I think most people really like it, if not love it. It's incredibly feminine, and it's not quite as serious as a Coco Mademoiselle. That would probably be my second recommendation. But I would say if you're looking for your first fragrance and you don't necessarily want something that's just evening or special occasion, Chanso Tendre is beautiful. I could wear this every single day and I don't think I would ever get sick of it. It's very pretty perfume and it's one of the best Chanel fragrances in my opinion. The next floral fragrance I have here to talk about is Penhaligon's The Favorite. And I'm so happy it's starting to warm up outside because this is one of the prettiest floral fragrances and it is perfect for spring, summer. It just smells like a fresh bouquet of flowers, as if you're walking through a field of wildflowers and nothing else. Keynotes include mandarin, violet leaf, bergamot, jasmine sandback, mimosa, orris, Indian sandalwood, musk, and broxen. And I do have to point out every single time I mention this fragrance that the bottle is one of the prettiest, definitely one of my favorite fragrance bottles in my collection. It's so cute. And this is one of my favorite Penhaligon's fragrances. I only have two, Changing Constants and The Favorite. But when I visited the counter, as much as there were other standouts, these were the clear winners. 
Mm. Fresh cut flowers. That's what I smell. And it smells very natural, like straight from nature, fresh cut. I almost get some herbs in there as well. Like a little dill, maybe some basil. It's just so clean and crispy fresh. It's springtime in a bottle. If you love fresh floral fragrances, this could easily be your everyday signature scent and you'd never look back. It's not really complicated. It's very simple and I don't want to say basic. Basic is the wrong word. I guess simple. <laughs> it's very clean, simple, very straightforward. It's not overly complex. It's not trying too hard to be different or unique. And yet it is. It smells different than other floral fragrances in my collection, other floral fragrances that I've just smelled and I've tried out and about. I think this is a very rich, very wealthy smelling fragrance. It has a very effortlessly chic, very timeless feel to it. I would imagine somebody like Kate Middleton or somebody from the royal family wearing this fragrance. I have no idea what fragrance she wears. If you know, let me know down in the comment section, but that's just what comes to mind. Going back to Fruity Florals, next I have D&G No. 3 Limperatrice. This is a classic fragrance and I will never forget the first time I smelled this because I was so blown away in Sephora and I thought, wow, this is so delicious. I can't wait to tell people about this perfume. I honestly thought I had discovered something new and here it's been around for years, decades at this point and it is a very well-known perfume. It smells like the most delicious, juicy fruit salad you have ever smelled. So perfect for spring, summer. Keynotes include watermelon, kiwi, red currant, rhubarb, sandalwood, and sensual musk. I love the watermelon kiwi combination, but it also smells very floral. This is another crowd pleaser as well. I would put this in the same category as a Chanel Chance Eau Tendre, very similar. And by now I'm sure I've said this word a hundred thousand times but it is just so fresh <laughs> it is light fresh it's a little bit crispy but in the best kind of way like crisp fresh fruit and it's the perfect grab and go i would wear this every single day not a problem and it comes in the larger bottles you can kind of spritz it all over and the dry down is beautiful as well. It never gets heavy. None of these fragrances have a really heavy woody base. They all stay very light and airy throughout the life of the fragrance, which I think is a good thing, especially if you have a very long day planned. You don't necessarily want something that's really heavy sitting on your skin for hours at a time. None of these will give you a headache. You won't get sick of wearing them. They're crowd pleaser fragrances. Other people will really enjoy smelling you. They'll probably ask you what you're wearing. And they're going to sit a little bit closer to the skin. So you're not going to get a ton of projection, but just a little whiff as you walk by somebody. They'll kind of, ooh, she smells really good. I would put this in the elevated body splash category. So again, it's kind of the perfect introduction to finer fragrances and designer fragrances. If, you're, if you've never really been a huge fragrance fan, but you're kind of tipping your toe in the water or you're looking to just expand your fragrance collection, I think D&G No. 3, L'Imperatrice, is such a great fragrance to have in your collection. And then the last two perfumes I have here to talk about are more aquatic freshies. Now, Giorgio Armani Ocean de Joa is considered to be a fruity floral, and it is very juicy and fruity and fresh but it truly does capture that feeling of being oceanside or near the water. Ocean de Joa pays tribute to the lively, joyful nature of the ocean. The crystalline floral fragrance is built around the aquatic freshness of water jasmine and the juicy notes of sparkling pear, fasted by a woody musk base. I find it to be very calming and almost thirst quenching. It's so watery. That juicy pear, it's very sparkling and bright. Definitely pops as soon as you spray the fragrance. And it has a natural smell to it. Like it smells like 
taken from nature, doesn't smell too artificially sweet or synthetic. Like I would imagine waking up on the beach and you just smell this way. <laughs> this is just the smell in the air. It would be very difficult for me to choose a favorite between Ocean de Joa, DNG number three, Limperatrice, and Chance Otandra. But I do think they're sort of similar. They serve the same purpose. You cer certainly wouldn't need all three of them in your fragrance collection. I think you could choose just your one go-to fresh fruity floral and that would be it. You cannot go wrong with any of these options. And the very last fragrance I have to mention today is so special to me and I've never talked about it before because it's new for my collection. This was sent to me complimentary from Commodity but it's an oldie goldie and I had this fragrance years ago and I loved it. In fact, I was thinking back trying to remember what the occasion was because I remember purchasing this fragrance. I think it was the very first birthday I celebrated with my husband. So we were in Nashville and I remember it because we were shopping at Sephora. I asked to go to Sephora to pick out my birthday gift and I was just shopping around and he was adding things to the to the cart, to the bag. He was like, oh, do you want this? Oh, do you want this? Okay, we'll get you this. Well, and I was just in shock because I had never had, I'd never dated anybody or had a boyfriend who was so kind and so generous to me. But we just walked around Sephora and I think I was too scared to even add anything to the bag. But he just, anytime I said, oh, that's pretty. I, I really like the look of that eyeshadow. He was like, yep, add it to the bag, add it to the bag. I think that was probably the moment I knew we needed to get married. There was a fragrance tower in Sephora and we were smelling all of the fragrances and they had really interesting names. I was not familiar at all with the brand. And my favorite was Rain. And then my husband picked out a few others. I think he got Gin, Book, and a couple other fragrances that day. And this became one of my favorite fragrances. I was wearing it constantly and then I dropped it on the floor. I dropped the bottle, it shattered and I don't think I had the heart to replace it. And then I don't even think they carry commodity at Sephora any longer, which is unfortunate because it's a great brand. I remember where I was when I dropped the bottle too because we had taken a weekend trip to New York and I was in the bathroom getting ready to go out on the town in New York City like ooh so excited and I dropped this bottle and I remember just being heartbroken and it smells the same it's a very soft floral very delicate almost like tulle it barely touches the skin and it's so feminine and just effortless could easily be an everyday fragrance i was so excited when they sent this to me because it had been years since i had smelled the fragrance i couldn't wait i just had to unbox it and when i smelled it on the blotter card i think i sprayed it on the blotter card i might have just sprayed it on my arm i thought wow it smells the same it just immediately brought me back keynotes include dewy green accord bergamot lemon verbena jasmine freesia lotus blossom white amber, water, musk, and sheer woods. I don't want to take anything away from commodity by comparing this house to Replica because they're very different, but I think in the same way that Replica sort of captures a moment or a scent memory, it's sort of the same thing with commodity. They sort of take this simplified object like book, paper, milk, nectar, in this case, rain, and they create a fragrance around it that just captures its essence in a way. And I did smell, I think Replica recently came out with the After the Rain Stops. I smelled it at Sephora the other day and I liked it, but it didn't really move the needle for me. I smelled a couple of the new fragrances and none of them really spoke to me. Commodity Rain is so much better in my opinion. This is clean and fresh in a bottle. Clean and fresh without being soapy, without too much citrus, and without being too fruity floral. It's none of those things. It's really hard to put this actually in a category, sort of in a category on its own. Makes me so happy that I rediscovered this fragrance again. I, I think I might even appreciate it more now. Like I like it even better the second time around.
And that completes my list of fresh, clean fragrances, perfect for spring, summer. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. If you have any favorites, any recommendations, drop me a comment. We'll keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, more fragrance content, I will see you on Wednesdays and Fridays. But go ahead and subscribe hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one.